Good morning and welcome to Winnipeg. We have the Winnipeg mug. Yes, how appropriate. Okay, and it is a beautiful day here. Uh, a little on the cool side. I was outside uh, a little while ago. Uh, uh, lately I've been starting to give Missy the dog uh, dog treats and she is getting so spoiled. It used to be that she, she used to just come to me and was satisfied with, you know, just a little tickle and a little scratch and uh, <laughs> now she's looking around. Where is it? Where is it? And usually I'll, I'll keep it in my pocket. <laughs> and she knows. <laughs> anyway, it's funny how dogs are so smart. She's only about two years old. Anyway, uh, what are we doing here? Okay, yesterday we painted, we painted these and we painted this. And today we're going to get the piece of photo etch that goes on the top of here. And hopefully something else. Uh... I don't know if we're going to be gluing parts down, like mod putting modules together here. If you'll notice here, the first part of step 40, it, it wants us to uh, drop some of these larger pieces down. I, I suppose we could, and then, although it might be, maybe it might be easier to uh, deal with the railings and the ladders first and then drop those large pieces down because that's just basically one operation and yeah i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to work on the uh the railing and and the uh you know, you know the the b11 or whatever it is where's my glasses I don't have my other glasses on okay uh, yeah the the b11 put that on uh because we're going to be wanting to handle the module uh, and I don't want to accidentally be breaking some of this really really fragile stuff off that is on the top of the smaller modules that get glued on later <laughs> I'm not making much sense am I okay let's let's get going here uh, yeah I haven't uh, checked this morning sunrise uh, when I did glance at the screen it looked I looked all right uh, I don't know if uh, we got anybody coming across the bridge or not, but we'll see how it goes. That's not important. This is important. Let's get at it. Um, yeah. If the weather's nice this afternoon, I want to do that uh, uh, odometer check. Um, I was just trying to... One of the viewers made a comment about how, how, you, how do you say odometer. Uh, odometer odometer um, I, I'm not sure what what we say here in Canada uh, it's a it's a word you don't use very often um, okay if somebody says how how many miles are on your car like uh, <laughs> you know that's that's a common term here in North America how many miles are on your car okay I got curious what is the mileage on my car and uh, obviously I'm sitting in it right now, but it, it appears that in order to read the, uh, the display, we're going to have to turn the key on. Now, now we, we don't say kilometerage, we say mileage, and yet everything's going to be in kilometers. Uh, I wonder, what do they say in countries like uh, in the UK, like if you want to... What would you say mileage or anyway, let's turn the key on and see what it says Okay, it's kind of hard to see if I can zoom in on that display. I've never done this before so um, Okay 4,412 kilometers? Yeah, that, that's all I've got. 4,000. Okay, so to, to uh, figure out the mileage, I guess you divide it by uh, uh, 1.6, and that'll give you how many miles are on my car. As, as I've said before, that's, that's kind of pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's get back to the model table. 
Yeah, well, check the odometer. Yeah, I think it's I think it's odometer. Odometer. <laughs> anyway, Yamato, Yamato. <laughs> okay, uh, let, let's let's get at it here. Okay, we need a piece that is called G12. And there it is. I'm wondering, is this supposed to represent some kind of a railing or something? And the person would be crawling up on top of this, uh, whatever it is. I suppose if we could find it in the uh, one of Stefan's drawings, it might be a little bit clearer. In the meantime, let's... Uh, Get it nipped off here. Okay, I have just resharpened my blade here. Now when I'm doing something like a railing or something like this, I have to be so careful to not uh, accidentally cut the rail, get too close to it. Get ourselves turned around here now. Ooh, I'm wondering, was I too close maybe there? Probably gonna have to straighten that out now. I think probably just squeeze it with my photo edge plier. Yeah, it was probably just a little bit too close right there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be a railing, but I'm not sure. Now you're going to recognize the fact that we are on Andy's photo edge bender right now. And here is a case again where they want us to make a bend where it's not going to want to naturally bend even though there is a folding line there. Okay, because what's going to happen? Alright, is that let's say let's say we want to bend at this this line right here where the point is touching and and this this half is going to want to we're going to want to fold up or maybe it may be even fold it down it doesn't matter but what is going to happen is that instead of bending right at the line and and this this half goes you know bends and the other half stays fastened in the bender it's going to bend right, right here. Whoops. <laughs> well, that didn't work out as planned, did it? Okay, I probably have this the wrong way around, not to what I had it before. Okay, I guess you get the idea. It's going to bend right, right here instead of at the folding line. Because the resistance is going to be far less right here and here than it is through this entire area even though they have, you know, put a folding line here. So, uh, this is where a person needs an extremely sharp bending tool of some kind, where, where, the, where the nose of the breaker bar only catches on the, on the, on the one part and not on the other part. And I, I, I just can never get these. There's, I've run into this situation a few times already, and it just, it always gives me a problem. So, anyway, we'll, we'll stick this in here, and we'll, uh, I guess the, the thing to do will be to uh, turn it around, and we'll, we'll, fold, we'll fold the square part up. Now, I know a person generally you generally want to fold towards the line, not away from it. Now in a case like this, you might actually have better luck folding it away from the line. There there will be less binding going on when, when the when this this part comes up against this part. Um or or this this part comes up against this part. 
I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Um, yeah, maybe I'll try and fold it away from the line. Even, even though that's the way we normally don't do it. Okay, what I've done now is I've turned this thing over. So that the folding lines are sort of out of sight. So I kind of kind of have to guess where we're going to put it here. And uh, we're going to fold this one first. Now, I, uh, did, I, did I say that this, this area here was the base? Actually, this will be the base of whatever it is we're making here. And this is going to be one of the rails that's going to get folded up. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this one up like this. We're going to fold this one up like this. And this one we're going to fold up like this. That's the plan. Now, see if I can get this in here. Okay, now how does that look? So let me check the monitor. Oh, it's, it's obviously got to come out just a little bit here. Um, sorry about getting my fingers in your way there. Pull this out. Get it straight. I wonder if there's something else I could use to manipulate this with. Now, how does that look? Well, I, I think... I think we're probably about as good as we're going to be able to get it here. Let's, let's see what happens if I put the razor blade underneath. I'm using an old straight razor blade instead of the uh, the other thing that I usually use. There we go. Okay, now is it going to bend at the at the line or is it going to give me a hard time here? I'm having a hard time holding on to the razor blade. Okay, it's going to go out of sight on you, but. When we pull it out, we'll know if we got it. Okay, it's at right angles now. Okay, let's just pull it out and see what it looks like. Does it bend where it was supposed to, or or didn't it? Uh, no, <laughs> it 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 didn't. It didn't bend where it was supposed to. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, it just will not fold at at the folding line. It it just can't. It just can't do it. So, okay, uh, now we're going to do the others. You know what, I think maybe I'll use the, the new Tamiya nipper, or, or the new Tamiya folding uh, plier, because uh, I can probably get the nose of it just right on the edge there, and then, and then fold this up. But I'm going to have to obviously do this off camera. Okay, I never did finish filing the edge of this down to make it sharper. But we'll see what we can do here. All right. So I think the best way to come is hold it like this. Whoops. Okay, now I, I, I actually can get the edge of this in exactly the right place the edge of the of the uh, bender that is the problem is it it won't bend at the folding line I wonder if I could find something uh, if I could bend it against this maybe let's see if that will work and I, I, I know you can't you, you can't see it it must be frustrating for you I wonder if I could what would happen if I was to put it right on the edge of Andy's bender, you know, like this, and then fold in? That might actually work. And in, in that case, I could use the uh, macro lens. 
you know very carefully now let's get this back up on there oh okay we got it more or less um yeah let's just uh okay i had to find a place in my uh tablecloth where there was already a hole so um Maybe I should just take that off for the time being. Well, that's not exactly the way I planned it, but... Okay, now we are going to want to be able to roll our, our blade like this. Okay, so I'll, I'll put Andy's bender in here. I'm hoping this will go open enough. Maybe it won't. edge here we'll we'll recompose in a moment here I just wanted to get this so it's not going to move I don't know if I mentioned this or not I'm pretty sure I did this vise is not well made it looks great but the there's just something wrong with the the way that the the screw drags the jaws together and it just it's, it's kind of gritty and it's, it's like it was it was like it was cast, like all the parts were cast, and then they weren't machined smooth afterwards. That's that's the feeling I get. Okay, that, that, that should work. I should be able to put enough force on there and uh, get in nice and steady. Yeah, that, that all being well, that is. All right, let's uh, get our little piece of uh, photo etch here. Put it down where we know where it is. And uh, get our macro lens back on. And uh, as I said before. Okay, I've had to move you up and around about 45 degrees here. Now the plan is to roll, roll the photo etch plier over and press down against the Andy's bender here. I'm pressing down pretty hard. I'm actually I'm realizing now that I'm moving the it's not going the way I had hoped, but okay I got that that angle correct. But here now you can see it did not bend at the folding line. And now at, at arm's length, you're not going to, not only are you not going to see that it didn't bend at the folding line, you're probably not even going to see this little part. Okay, I'm going to just do the same on the other one now. So let me recompose here. Um, I might have to re-angle my camera because I'm going to have to come in up here and bend it around this way. So I'm just going to refocus the camera here too. Yeah. Okay, let's just grab hold of this a little bit differently here now. I'm gonna have to take it off camera and, and reposition it because the the nose of the of the uh, the needle nose plier here has to be in just the right place. Okay, it's a good thing I can bleep out the the dead spots here. I'm sort of folding away from myself here, so I can't really see too good what's going on. Um, I'm going to have to take it away and reposition it in my hand here. Because my hand was uh, trying to turn in a way it didn't want to.
Okay. Did this one fold where it was supposed to? No, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think it did. No, it didn't. Okay, now we gotta push push this up just a little bit here. I wonder if I should be soldering this together. Yeah, I wonder if I should... Sorry to be getting my fingers in your way there. Okay, this, this one here is a little bit too far in, isn't it? Pull it back out a bit. Okay, if I could get this, if I could get this one that I'm touching now to come just about a half a millimeter. Like, I know a person has a feeling, well, why don't you just squeeze it together like this? Well, yeah, you, you, you could, except that it won't stay. Unless I was to maybe do it like this. If it, what if I was to, whoops. Okay, grab hold of it. Sorry to be getting my my fingers in your way all the time here, but... Okay, now what What if I was to go like this? Will it stay together? I believe it will. I believe it will. Okay, now if I was to... Maybe I won't even bother soldering this connection. Maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll use uh, I'll use CA glue and uh, just put a little CA just on that joint there and uh, I'll use this use this where'd it go? Not to worry. Okay. Um, All right, nothing's bent out of shape. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to turn it around so I can see it real good here. Maybe if I used my fingers instead. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I put a little bit of CA, extra thin, quick setting, just on that one seam there, and uh, we'll get it off Andy's photo etch bender when we do that. I'll maybe fasten it in a alligator clip or something. Now the alligator clip would be too strong for that. I'll, I'll use a self-locking plier. Okay, you can see there's a bit of a gap there, but I'm hoping that the CA is going to fill that. And what what I've got going on here now is the uh, I've got some quick setting, and uh, just try not to bump anything here. I wonder maybe if I should have used something a little bit thicker. I'm also wondering if maybe I should have uh, taped this down so it doesn't move on me. I just can't seem to... I can't get a blob of it on the end of my applicator. No, I'm sort of getting it. Yeah, I'm sort of getting it. Okay, now let's swing it around here and See if we can do the other side.
Okay, I, I think we've got it. It's kind of hard to tell. You know, I'm looking. I'm looking at this other side now, and it it almost looks like I've still got a gap there. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to use a thicker CA. That's just not. That's just not closing the gap. And I'm probably going to have to do this off camera. All right, now how do I fasten that on there? Because I'm going to be, I'm going to want to be able to paint this. Maybe put uh, put some CA. Probably going to. The best thing might be to CA, CA it down. Just just about right where it is, and then repaint the, the bottom part of it with the 19 and then maybe black on the railings up, up above. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a railing and you would probably have a ladder maybe that would come up the back and I, I, I can't think of what else this thing could be for. You know what? Let's see if we can find it in Stefan's book. Okay, I could not find any photos. It does not mean they don't exist. It's just I didn't see it. And uh, I did actually look. Now, we are in the animation here. And we are at the beginning in 1943, 1944. Now, if you watch, we should be able to spot something right about here where, where the arrow is pointing. And yes, you, you sort of see something coming into view here okay just just right there where I'm touching right now um, but I'm not seeing any railings or anything like that I mean we're just we're just too far back unless later on we get a, a better uh, shot of it um, okay okay now it got covered whatever whatever we're working on right now it got covered up and we're not going to see it. So let's just hope that possibly we're going to... Let's let's just scrub through this a little bit here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Are we going to go high enough? We should be... We, we need to look up here. Um, let me just see if I can stop this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, okay, this this thing right here... That's sort of, it's in the right place, but it's, okay, we are in, we are in the right place, but, uh, okay, it's not showing any railings here, or once again, it got covered with a sort of a canopy thing, okay, well, we tried, folks, we tried. Uh, <laughs> it could be that uh, Trumpeter thought there should be a railing up there, and uh, <laughs> they just put it there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's let's carry on. Let's move on. We're we're not getting anywhere again today. Okay, so we have not definitively found out. In fact, not even a little bit found out what this thing was. Um. Okay, now I think I've got it about as square as I can get it on there. And being as we're going to be repainting the entire thing anyway. It doesn't want to come. Okay, just let it flood around on there. Oh, oh. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, push stop. Okay. I don't think it matters which way this goes up as long as it looks like it, you would crawl up it from the back. Let's just get some of this on there and then just drop it in place. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's going to adhere. And does that look like it's square or should I pull a little bit more? Maybe just a tiny bit this way. Okay, I'm gonna 
together here. That looks pretty good. Okay, now the CA glue is more or less all the way around. This is the uh, CA thin, not the quick setting. So I don't think I'm going to bother putting a little bit of curing agent on there. I'm just going to let it cure. Time is getting on here. What time is it anyway? Okay, it's 18 minutes after 2. I get a coffee visitor here in just a little over an hour, so i got to wind her up. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow.